All right, what is up, everybody? So, Shout Scout 13 here coming in with Kyler, the Wookiee Extraordinaire. Hello, hello. And today we're going to go over Cunning. And again, it's kind of, we're going to leave a few cards out because we really kind of want to hit on the the cards that Kyler thinks, especially, are the best playable and probably the most important that you want to have in most your deck. Most common. Yeah, yeah most too. common. Uh, so first off, we've got the leaders, and we've got Boba Fett. Yep. Big bad Boba Fett. Numero uno leader, big bad villainy. Gonna take you in live or, live or dead, he don't care. And this guy is incredible. He readies resources, and so being able to play more cards than your opponent generally means that you're winning the game. So Boba Fett is definitely, definitely a force to be reckoned with. I think the biggest thing that makes him so powerful is the fact that he's also a turn four leader. He comes off of, he comes out on five resources, and with the ability to play green with him and get ramp, now you're getting him out even sooner. So getting this guy online is just so good. He's also really great stats for for when he comes out. I don't, I don't know what the developers were were smoking when they made this card. But boy, oh boy, he probably should have been a 4-5 if he comes out on 5. Maybe a 4-6 would be generous, but whew, I think, this guy's I think good. That, yeah, I think that Mando armor is uh, coming in handy. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, yeah, <laughs> that Beskar is getting in work, man, because he is hard to take out for how early he comes out. So he's super, super good. The heroism leader that I'd like to highlight is Han Solo. He is incredibly good. And wow, did we notice a theme here? Resources. The ability for Han Solo to play extra resources. Yeah, they die or, or get discarded afterwards, you know, or later. But who cares? We're living life, you know? You, you, you're, trying to get, you're trying to get those big cards out as quickly as possible and use the fact that you're playing a turn ahead of your opponent to really ramp up and get big cards out there way before your opponent's able to handle them and that's where han solo is just so good so han solo definitely the better cunning heroism leader and it, thrawn, it's not like i it's love like... thrawn i love thrawn but he definitely is is neat he needs a little love maybe he needs a set too he needs a little love and Jin urso great in sealed not loving her in constructed she's she's fine but Again, we're Boba Fett and Han Solo. Those are the guys to keep an eye on. And it's not like there aren't cards that allow you to get stuff out of your discard pile. So it, I feel like Han can do well, unless you don't think that that's necessary, even with Han. You ju you're all gas, no brakes, man. All gas, no brakes. You just ramp into the big stuff before your opponent is ready for it and just run wild with the game. And yeah, there's some combos, and I encourage you guys to go look up some of those Han decks that ramp and get, you know, the... Ewing on you know two turns sooner than it should get played or the han solo unit card before it should be played just super super cool uh list so definitely worth looking up um okay. base wise i'm only bringing it up because i just want to bring up how bad it is <laughs> the worst rare base jetta city mm. The reason why it's bad is because it's disarm on an epic action once per game disarm that's pretty poor it needs a little love i don't know if they're gonna go the way of like errata or any of that you know to so if they don't this this guy's probably just gonna sit in people's uh you know this is this is this is the coaster of the, of, the, mm. of the set you know if you if you're looking for a coaster and you can't find one just grab a copy of jetta <laughs> city so yeah. Oof. it it's 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 sad it needs something maybe if it tapped a unit in addition to giving negative four that would be pretty sick if it uh if it allowed you to attack with a unit and give an opponent unit negative four that could be pretty cool because then you then it really leans into the whole like I'm gonna trade with you and I'm not gonna die. Would those be too powerful? No, I don't think so. I think I mean they're not they're not they're certainly they're certainly uh, stronger. Or the, I don't even think that that would be as strong as Energy Conversion Lab. So to to that end, I think if if we're saying that rare bases should have an effect 
as strong as ECL, then 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 that would be on the table. So just wanted to bring it up because of that. Um, now moving on to the actual cards of the set, the the cunning cards, cunning villainy. We have to start out with none other than Boba Fett. We talked about the leader. Well, let's look at the unit card. So the Boba unit card is incredibly good. It's a little tricky worded, the fact that he only gets to deal the damage if the unit was already in play and is, and is, an, is an exhausted unit. So there's going to be these worlds where people don't really remember the timings just right and it's it's definitely something you got to watch out for but the reason why he's so good is that look at those stats we were talking about that beskar armor he's got five health for a three costed card holy moly this guy yeah. is way overstated so if... even if you're not getting his on attack trigger i mean he's he's a he's just great yeah it's crazy that like a guy who um accidentally died well not died but you know accidentally got into the sarlacc pit you know, five health is, is really nice. That's why he was able to survive the Sarlacc pit. It's because he had five health. <laughs> if he had four health, he would have died. Yes, exactly. So, <laughs> so, yeah, the the one thing, the one rules thing that I'd like to bring up to people watching about Boba Fett is that a leader is in play from the beginning of the game. And when it's deployed, if they attack with that leader and he attacks that leader, even if it was the turn that they deployed, he does get the trigger because they were already in play. So, and so that's a. That's a fun little that's a fun little rules interaction there. All right, so I've got like two small questions. So one, when it says on attack, um, do you do the three damage first before you do the three damage that he puts out? Yeah, and if the unit dies, then of course the, the, he doesn't take any damage, which is also a great thing. So he can use his his on attack trigger to snipe things before they actually hit each other. And then if you used the card that we'll talk about in a little bit, the No Good to Me Dead, that would exhaust a unit that was probably already in play, and then you could attack that unit, get the three. Well, you can exhaust a unit with No Good to Me Dead, right? And then just keep it from unexhausting on the next turn, and then just use Boba to take him out. Ah, okay. So that's another way that, that's another, and, and of course, No Good to Me Dead. I mean, it's his line, right? So of course that card's going to work with him, right? So, so yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, spoilers for up ahead. Uh, <laughs> if we're going to talk about <laughs> No Good to Me Dead. Um, the next card to talk about is seventh, seventh Fleet Defender. In the Vigilance video, we did bring up this card and how having uh, two health can be a little bit susceptible to uh, negative effects. Negative two, negative two, negative three, negative three, etc. Because it does make the card die. But let's be real. Those cards are the only things that get around this thing. A 3-2 shielded unit, 4-3 is awesome. It's going to trade up into things, right? So if you're thinking about, oh, man, they have this this uh, Bright Hope, 2-6 Sentinel. Well, this thing can actually trade well with that, right? So it can throw three damage into it, pops the shield, and then on the following attack, it can take it out. So it can actually trade up into cards that cost more than it. So that's that's why the shields are so good. And if you have a way to give it more shields later, like if you have ability to reshield it or do something like that, this thing can be a nuisance. So definitely a great card, and it's in the space lane. And anytime you can see a good space unit, it's definitely worth talking about. Okay. Uh, jumping back to the ground, we have Bosk, ambush. Best keyword in the game. I love ambush. It allows you to basically get two actions off of one, playing a card and attacking all in one go. And then the ability on him, if he if he does survive, really makes your opponent have to think twice about what's lingering around on their board that's almost dead and you know the sequencing that your opponent's going to have to do they're like oh does he have an event in his hand because every time every time you play an event two damage to a unit and it can shoot spaceships so that's super 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 good and you definitely yeah. want to be remembering that when you're playing bosk yeah um talking arenas. about spaceships we're going to jump back to space for fett's fire spray i think you're going to see a theme in the cunning and villainy of all the best cards our Boba Fett cards. So Fett's Fire Spray is so good. It's a 5-6 six for 6. If you, if your leader is Boba or Django, so we do know Django Fett will be or uh, at least a unit, but probably he'll be a leader. So we know he's coming. He's at he least coming ready to, this unit. He's at least coming to Unlimited before Legion, so... <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's true. That's so sad. That's so true. So uh, he will be, 
he, yeah, he will he will be another card that you're going to be able to pair with Fett's Fire Spray. But the fact that it comes in as a when played effect is what's important. So unlike unlike the Millennium Falcon, which just enters play ready, this card readies itself off of a when played effect. So people have found cleverly that if you compare this with Energy Conversion Lab and give it Ambush, you now have two when played effects. And as the active player, you choose the order that you want to do them in. So you say, I'm going to resolve my Ambush first. You do the Ambush. You attack with it immediately. And then you say, okay, now that after the attack, I'm going to resolve the other trigger, which is that my leader is Boba Fett. And so then you get to untap it after it's already attacked. So basically, you get to double tap with this card. Super, super good. Oh, yeah. That's so nice. And then you can exhaust a unit, and then that can also trigger... Uh, yeah, exhausting non yeah, exhausting non unique units can be sometimes the difference between whether or not you're gonna be able to use the Boba Fett unit card's ability to snipe them. So yeah, there's definitely some synergy there as well. Yeah, and the next we have no we already the... we already we already we already talked about this one. We kind of spoiled it, but there it is. No good to me dead. Exhaust a unit, and then they can't ready this round. Now, for the people who are new. Unlike other card games, the untap happens at the end of turns. So what this effectively means is that it's not only exhausted this turn, but in the next turn, because I've, I'd ready everything at the end of the turn, it won't ready then. And so into the next turn, it's still exhausted, right? So this is exhausting. So if some, if you if you had a unit that was ready and you targeted it with this, they will they won't be able to use it for two turns. That's pretty awesome. And, and of course, the synergies with Boba Fett make it even better. And then I was seeing uh, somebody ask a question with the Grand Inquisitor. You know, if you give it a damage, you can ready it. This card still overrides that, and that you cannot ready it even with another card effect. That is correct. This effect is a lasting effect that is making the unit unreadyable, which is different than just saying it doesn't ready during the one phase this just says period it cannot ready uh this round they exactly. would be able to use the grand inquisitor on the next round to ready it so do keep in mind that there is this silver lining where the grand inquisitor player can kind of work around that a little bit right so if you played no good to me he couldn't use his ability on him this turn but next turn when it's still exhausted grand inquisitor could untap it then because it would be it would be a new round, okay? Yeah, that's so, good to know. Little, little, little trickiness there. So definitely definitely consult your judges whenever you're curious about these rules interactions with, 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 with cards like this because I think far too often cards like these are going to get played the way people think they intuitively work. And again, if you're coming from another card game like myself who have played other ones, this one is a little weird because of the, the phases and how long the, the lasting effect works. Nice. All right. The next card we're going to talk about is the first Heroism Cunning card, which is Leia Organa. We talked about how good readying resources were. Well, guess what? She can do that to herself. She could just cost one less effectively. Yeah, that's pretty great. But what makes her incredibly good is that in the late game, when you don't really need the extra resources, the ability for you to just say, you know what? No, 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 no. That that really big scary thing just needs to be. You know, let's let's just let's just exhaust that. I don't want to deal with that right now. So Leia Organa is definitely some something that you should consider keeping in your decks if you're in the cunning heroism colors. Mm -hmm. The next one is Ezra. Great stats. Unfortunately, he's not wearing Beskar, apparently, because he's only a 3-4. But Ezra is quite good. He has the Spectre tag. It can be relevant. Um by buffing your other Spectre abil uh, abilities like like Kanan's. But really, you're going to be playing this guy because he effectively increases your hand size if, as long as you're attacking before spending your resources, right? So if I, if I attack with him and he lives, so uh, we're going to talk about the rules interaction there. When a unit completes an attack, that means it must survive the full attack sequence, okay? If it tr if he trades with something, you did not complete the attack sequence. He died in the attack sequence. So when he completes the attack, you get to look at the top card of the deck. That's cool. I just like the fact that I get to peek at my next turn, right? That's More information is better. But then you can also play it, discard it, or leave it on the top of your deck. That's super, super good. So 
if I wanted to play that card, if I it's if that card's more relevant than what's in my current hand, you can just play it right then and there. But the ability to then just say, oh, actually, you know what? I don't really want this. This is this is bad in this matchup that I'm playing. You can also just discard it. Or if it's exactly what you want, but maybe you don't have enough to pay for it this turn, or it's not the best play for the turn, you can just yeah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that right there on top of my deck, and I'll I'll get that next turn. So great effect. Definitely. And you still have to pay. Yeah, if you play it, you still have to pay. So. Yeah the 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 the, the definition for play says as pay resources so unlike other card games where when they say play a card that that usually means you just get to do the card anytime you see play if it doesn't if it isn't followed by the word free or for for free then yeah you still have to pay which is just like energy conversion lab it says it says play a unit that costs six or less from your hand and it gains ambush well play Still costs the resources, but it then it gets ambush, right? So your the epic, epic action is just getting an ambush. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Millennium Falcon's next. Millennium Falcon apparently doesn't have Beskar either because it's a three mm -hmm. four. But <laughs> I will say what's cool about it is that it is the fastest ship in the galaxy because it <laughs> it is it enters play ready to go, which is uh. I, I I just love that I love the flavor there, right? Anytime that you can you can mix in a little bit of flavor with a card, this is the fastest ship. Well, yeah, it is because it is entering play ready. So that's pretty cool. The when you ready cards during the regroup phase, either pay one or return the ship to your owner's hand. Um, you probably don't even care because it enters play ready. So sometimes if it's the lit, if, you know it's towards the end of the game, you're you know you're just like you're fine to just say you know I'm not gonna pay the one. I'm going to return it to my hand. It's going to remove all the damage that it had on it, you know, from trading and attacking and stuff. And then I'm just going to replay it. And it's ready, and so I'm going to go ahead and swing in. So really good card. And then, of course, if you do have the resources, uh, yeah, pay one. That's not that's not, that's not not a lot to pay for uh, for a card that uh, comes into play ready. So Yeah, and for a piece of junk, this is really nice. <laughs> it is. It is a, <laughs> yeah, I love the subtext. Piece of junk. Love that. Uh, who who likes to drive around that piece of junk? Well, none other than Chewbacca, the next card. Sentinel, 3-6. I mean, Wookiees don't need Beskar, apparently, because they're, 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 they're tough. Oh, yeah. Loyal Chewbacca, Loyal Companion, is a Sentinel. He's protecting your base. He's keeping things on lock. The best part about him is that your opponent really doesn't want to attack him because he can hit you in the face and then you have to attack him because he's a sentinel and then he's just going to ready and hit you in the face again. So what is the what is the, what do they say? Let the Wookiee win? Yeah. You, yes. <laughs> you definitely <laughs> don't want to be attacking this guy. And I think that that's what makes him so cool. And in the cunning heroism colors, having more sentinel is really great. Yeah. Uh, last but certainly not least is the man himself, Han Solo. Our Magic the Gathering players will know his ability very well, is that while he's attacking, he has first strike. He gets to deal his damage before the defender. Again, 10 out of 10 on the flavor. Han shoots first, right? Oh, yeah. This is just so great. So Ambush also makes him fast. He comes out blazing. He takes something out, and if it dies, it doesn't deal the damage back. So, 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 so good. 6-6 six, six ambush. Great stats for the cost. You know, he, he basically costs one less than Palpatine for the same stats. Gets ambush, and his ability, which effectively is like the Palpatine's ability, the only difference, of course, is that, you know, he doesn't get to divide that damage. So, you definitely can see how strong he is when you start looking at other cards and kind of seeing, like, what they're gaining in terms of value. Uh, no no overwhelm on this card and i think that that's what the only thing that keeps him fair is that if he had any other if he had any more on him than than what he already has here it would just be uh way too, way too good so yeah the hot soul is really great card. yeah i love so, this card so good if you're going to be playing heroism and cun uh cunning you'd be mad to not include this in your in your in your deck mhm mm all right, and moving to the double aspect, uh, the best double aspect card of the bunch is Cunning. Why is it the best? Well, it's the best because it's the most consistently good in all situations. 
There's almost no point in any game where you're not going to want to be doing two of these effects. So it can exhaust two units for one of those bullets. Well, that's pretty darn freaking good, right? Yeah. An opponent dis discards a card at random. Oh, yeah, disrupt what your opponent wants to do next turn. That could be pretty good. Returning a non-unit leader with four or less power to its owner's hand. Well, guess what? Most things are going to have four or less power to the, you know, for the, for the for most of the game, right? So this is pretty much hitting, I would say, the bulk of cards. Just return them to the hand. You can pair that up with the discard a card at random. So sometimes you just make them discard the card that you just returned to their hand. So that's pretty cool. Oh, and nice. then of course the 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 best one of all the four. And I say best, you know, but I. It's because obviously if I exhausted down my opponent's stuff and their board's wide open. Wow, why don't I just pop them in the face for four more extra uh, damage? So pop, putting a plus four plus zero on one of your guys for the phase, just that's a lot of damage. Um, you're you're never gonna feel like cunning is not the right card for a situation. Um, super super good. It's it's definitely up there. Vigilance is number two. This one's definitely number one. This is the A plus card. Yeah, because returning a non leader unit with four or less power also gets rid of a lot of sentinels. I feel like. So then Absolutely. that leaves you kind of free to attack anything. Yeah. In fact, majority of Sentinels in this game target that nice sweet spot of having four or less. Uh, I cannot think of one off the top of my head that breaks Just that the, rule. the Chewy, I think. Except for, except for conditional ones. Like there's the green spaceship that can give something Sentinel, and I believe it's a 5-6. And oh, then yeah. there's the vigilant honor guards and i think that they're a five six but they lose vigilance whenever they take damage so also condition yeah so pretty much all this all the staple sentinel cards are going to be able to be returned to the hand so yeah throw that back to your hand and then just uh smack them for plus four seems pretty good oh yeah that's so nice uh, moving on to the counterpart to the han shoot shooting first is greedo one cost three one and when he's defeated you may discard the top card from your deck and if it's not a unit deal two damage to the to a ground unit so he can actually kill a boba fett and he costs one so that if if you get the if you trigger the the ability that's pretty good so that's why he's on my list because this guy is really really good now discarding the top card of your own deck can feel kind of bad but if you're playing around with the ratios you know there's going to be probably like a 40 percent chance that this is going to trigger and the way that you got to look at the card that you discard is that if you don't play a bunch of one ofs in your deck then you can kind of look at it as like discarding that card could have been you know in a perfectly shuffled deck the bottom card of your deck and you'd never see it anyway right so you you shouldn't get too tilted if you if you discard a good card off of the top of your deck unless you just happen to be running one of it uh in which case that's a little bit of a bummer but uh the the effect is almost a, a free gimme to just like hey let me see if i can do two extra damage so super super great card yeah this is a much better version of the uh stormtrooper you know death star stormtrooper guard guy not yep. the sentinel one but the the other one costs three one he's he's just a little better because of the fact the of the colors that he's in that that lends it lends itself really well to playing events and hitting that trigger but it is random so yeah definitely definitely keep that in mind mm -hmm. the next card to talk about is the strafing gunship <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> definitely didn't read that wrong for a month <laughs> um, <laughs> Strafing Gunship is a 3-4, but it's the only unit in the game right now that can attack across lanes. So that's what makes this thing so awesome. And when it does do the thing that it's supposed to do, which is attack across lanes, it gives the defender, the thing that it's attacking, negative 2 power. So it allows it to trade into things more, more equitably and... The thing that's important to note about those those uh, those such trades is that if you think about it, if it attacked something, even if it didn't kill it off, if it survived, that unit can't attack it back, right? Because it's cross lane, so it's it's relatively free to swing into the other lane. So that's yeah. another way to look at this this card. I think it's really really good. 
You're not seeing it played a ton right now because Boba Fett decks are packed with all sorts of juicy goodness, but I definitely love this in a Thrawn deck or, you know, a deck that wants to be more controlling because this kind of is that controlling feel where you're playing spaceship that can also kind of scout for the ground. Um, so pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, I like the um, the options that you, it gives you. Flexibility is key. So the next card that we're going to talk about is shoot first so we talked about that first strike ability from han solo well this just puts that on any unit that you want the thing that makes this card go over the top is that not only is it plus one plus zero and getting that attack first effect but it also allows you to attack when you play this card so you're getting three spicy meatballs all in one go right attack with the unit give it plus one and it deals its damage first so shoot first allows units to trade up into things that they really have no business attacking into. Man, that, that is really nice. And then, speaking of attacking, uh, this is the little baby brother of cutting. Attack with a unit, and it gets plus 3, plus 0 for this attack. So, instead of getting plus 4, plus 0, it gets plus 3, plus 0, but it allows you to attack right away. So, super amazing it closes out games oftentimes your opponent is just looking at a greedo in play they're thinking they're fine and then all of a sudden greedo pops them in the face for six damage and they're like whoa bud whoa <laughs> that's a lot of damage to be coming from just a little one drop unit right you know yeah so so surprise strike it does exactly what it's supposed to do it will take your opponent by surprise they will be shocked uh when all of a sudden they thought that they were fine and then they're very quickly dead and the other piece of cunning, the one that we were talking about, is returning units to hand. Well, this one does it even better because it just hits any non-leader unit. So no power restraints, no no restrictions on this. This just says, you know what, that thing, I'm tired of looking at it. Puts it back in your opponent's hand. And oftentimes that can be a pesky sentinel, like you mentioned before, or it can be a unit that is providing a buff for your opponent's units that otherwise you know you need to get rid of it or very even, very very strong yeah or even or you're just making expensive. them uh yeah or if you're just saying hey you just spent eight for that card or whatever right and uh how about you pay eight next turn as well <laughs> yeah you know it uh, limits so, their so options it really does so it can clog up your opponent's hand um in 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 some really really interesting ways so waylay is definitely not a card that you're going to just use brain mindlessly you know you're not you're not you're not just going to throw it out there on the first thing you see you definitely want to snipe those those moments where you're like you're watching your opponent they just played a card they've exhausted all their resources and you say okay hey how about you just take that back to your hand bud and uh it, it can just it could just set the tempo for you for for the next three or four turns and even though they didn't lose the card they still have it in their hand they they it takes them a while to recuperate from from having to play it twice and another good thing is is that this pairs really well with the leader Boba Fett because when an enemy unit leaves play, you can exhaust this leader to ready a resource, and technically Waylay right. is making that unit leave. Um, and Correct. It's... He doesn't he doesn't say defeat. He says leave, and that's the that's a great distinction to bring up because that is why Waylay is used in the Boba Fett decks to a great level of success. Yeah, and if you have a Jabba the Hut, it's only going to cost one less, and then. You also get to ready that resource that was one. You can less find and... it off of Jabba too because it's a trick, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a really good combo with you know Jabba and Boba Fett and Waylay. And funny enough, uh, the three the three events that we did feature are all three tricks. So trick, uh, or sorry, sorry, two of the three yeah. are tricks, which is Waylay and shoots first, right? So tricks are in general a very strong keyword. So. We didn't bring up Jabba the Hutt because he's not quite on my top, but hey, if you do find room for Jabba, if you do want to play the slug, pop some <laughs> waylays in your deck. You'll have a good time. Yeah, I mean, he is 8 health, so he could last. He is going to last a little while. <laughs> he's such a big boy. <laughs> yeah. Imagine giving him Sentinel. That would, I mean, he's not, his attack's terrible, but at least his health is up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm happy that he doesn't have Sentinel. That would be that would be way too way too annoying. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right, guys, that is it for uh, cunning. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it because 
I've learned a lot, and hopefully you did too. So thanks, Kyler, for everything you've done and for explaining a lot of these really good cards. All right, thanks. All right, guys, and we will see you in the next video talking about villainy and heroism. Y'all take it easy. All right, that was awesome, man. And that took literally exactly 30 minutes.